Milling Through History presents Bacon's Rebellion. When it comes to the early history of Virginia, one of the events which is perhaps seminal in the creation of the early days of the United States is an event referred to as Bacon's Rebellion. Now, most people might not necessarily know what that is or even understand exactly how important it was. But Bacon's Rebellion is an event which has far-reaching implications when it comes not only to Virginia history, but United States history as a whole. Its origins begin in the 1650s, when English colonization of Virginia was primarily located in an area of Virginia called the Northern Neck. Now, as English colonists began to move towards the frontier of this region, they had their eyes moving north along the Potomac River and further into the heart of what is present-day Virginia. Now, at the same time as these colonists began inching their way further and further west, indigenous natives began moving into the area as well to defend their territorial land and prevent the spread of this new group of people who just didn't seem to ever stop coming from over the horizon. In 1666, the colonists declared war on the natives and were able to drive many of the indigenous peoples away by 1670. Now, during this particular period of conflict, Governor of Virginia William Berkeley saw that keeping some of the indigenous natives around was the best thing for Virginia to do, primarily because the Virginians could then use these now pacified natives as spies and help to ensure the safety of Virginia by having allies who could protect their border. Now, one prominent Virginian at the time was a man by the name of Nathaniel Bacon. And he was a rather outspoken individual and disagreed with the governor on his idea of what to do with the indigenous peoples. While Berkeley was more open to try living co and peaceably and, co and coexist with them, it was Bacon who believed it was necessary to wipe them out and drive them away as it was the Englishman's duty to conquer this land and take it over. As a result of this, the 1670s proved to be a tumultuous time between Berkeley and Bacon, as the two would argue consistently as to what to do with the indigenous natives. In 1675, an Indian attack in Stafford County led to a great deal of anger and outrage amongst the Virginians. As the militia was being raised, immediate anger towards all Indians began to become rampant, and there would be continued back and forth attacks from both indigenous natives and European colonists, as each side would keep doing raids, attacking villages, killing men, women, and children, all in an attempt to try to pacify the other side. Now, when reports came in about another impending attack, Nathaniel Bacon would join other farmers who were organizing a new militia to go after the Indian raids. Now, one of the things that forced the creation of this was that Governor Berkeley had decided he would not do any more retaliation against the Indians. He felt that too much of an eye for an eye principle would only lead to more devastation. Seeing this, Bacon and his small army would try to make alliances with the Okanichi Indian tribe, convincing them to go after other indigenous groups. And as the warriors went off to do this, Bacon and his men immediately turned around and wiped out their villages. And when the warriors returned, wiped them out as well. After massacring all of the Okanichi, Bacon had learned that Governor Berkeley had dismissed the House of Burgesses and called for new elections. Hoping to get a new House of Burgesses in place to go after Bacon and his supporters, Berkeley was rather stunned to discover that the people who were being elected into office actually favored Nathaniel Bacon. As a result of this, the new House would pass what is referred to as Bacon's Laws, which would greatly curtail the power of the governor and increase the voting rights to poor individuals. Now, Bacon would later march on the capital of Jamestown and he did so because he had not received a commission by Governor Berkeley. Now, Berkeley was getting tired of Bacon, and when Bacon approached him and demanded that the governor give him his commission, otherwise Bacon would order his men to shoot the governor, William Berkeley stood directly up to him, opened his shirt, and effectively dared him to do it. 
Having his bluff called, Bacon opted not to shoot the governor, but instead ordered his men to turn their attention to the rest of the House of Burgesses, effectively intimidating the legislature into submitting to his own will and giving him his commission. Nathaniel Baker would then issue the Declaration of the People, which leveled accusations against Governor Berkeley, specifically citing his raising of taxes, being pro-Indian, advancing his own followers into public office, and monopolizing the beaver trade. On September 19th, Nathaniel Bacon and his men would capture Jamestown and burn the colonial capital to the ground. However, before any real form of retaliation could occur, from Governor Berkeley and royal authorities, Nathaniel Bacon would pass away from dysentery. As a result, without the flamboyant leader there to continuously charge his men into wanting to fight, the entire rebellion basically dissipated very quickly. As a result of this, when Governor Berkeley returned to Jamestown, he would seize the property of several rebels and execute 23 men. However, Bacon's Rebellion had many influences to it. Many of the founding fathers of the United States cited Bacon's Rebellion as one of the earliest forms of individual liberty trying to overthrow anyone that was trying to show over-dominating authority due to royal power. However, one of the unintended side effects, which is oftentimes not looked at, was the fact that Bacon's Rebellion was something which had united many poor individuals within Virginia, both white and black. As a result, because the poor groups were able to unite together, upper class elites in Virginia feared that if the poor ever realized that if they just got rid of the upper classes, then they could actually benefit as a united society, more stringent laws came into place, which ensured not only further racial divisions, but economic divisions between upper classes and lower classes effectively setting into motion hundreds of years worth of economic and political and racial strife that has been found in the United States. For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.